Hello everybody and um, today I want to do some of the basic tests you have to perform if we talk about um, transmission lines, coil configuration, um, impedance matching and so on. Um, I want to do some kind of tests. I want to see if, if the tests are coming back as expected with the results. So what we're going to do today is I have 21 meter of coax cable here and the task I need to perform is to calculate the wave propagation within this cable. So that's the first task and then we're going to put this cable in a coil form on a solenoid and then we measure again if that makes any difference. So we have here oscilloscope. So oscilloscope measure at the end of the cable the frequency then we have the scalar network analyzer here scalar network analyzer is a spectrum analyzer with a tracking device what that means is that the spectrum analyzer is measuring the frequency domain as you might know and at the same time in sync so as to the same domain, there is a frequency actually um, sent via the tracking device, which is then picked up from the spectrum analyzer. And any derivation from the norm will be indicated as a drop in the line. So what it means is you have when a tracking device is, or let's say that when, when the line is completely infinite that means if there is no resonance or no feedback of a line available you see a horizontal line if there's any kind of feedback you see a drop in the line at resonance at exactly the frequency where this um, drop occurs so you have said a couple of dips let's say you calculate a couple of dips takes the average that gives you the speeds then you have to also to take into account the length of the wire for those of you not familiar with transmission line principles you take a long line here an example um, a coax cable so the line has between the shielding and the inner core has capacitance so if this line is infinite and that is a 50 ohm cable for example if this cable is infinite, there will not be any feedback, so we would expect a long line. We would expect a long line as well if impedance is completely matched. Impedance means that the resistance or say the impedance on a source side is equal to the impedance on a load side. What does that mean? That means is, let's say I have 100 watt of power transmitted on the source side into the cable and have on the other side an antenna a hundred percent load would mean that the antenna can transmit hundred percent of energy in reality that is not the case but it can be quite good so what you have to do is you have to impedance match you have to match the source impedance with a load impedance to avoid any kind of standing waves or reflections in the line any reflection coming back from the lawn back to the sort is destructive, can, dis can destroy the amplifier and the efficiency of the antenna system would be very very low. So for network engineers, power engineers and radio engineers this is a, that is a bet, the bread they have to earn to calculate this kind of information what line for what frequencies they have to use and what impedance they have to make sure um, has to be applied to the transmission line in order to have the highest efficiency of power transmission to the load. So what else you need to um, bear in mind is that a wave, a complete wave, is, is literally a 360 degree turn. However, if you mesh power we have to measure the quarter wave which means it's a starting point of energy from a source going to the um, top level of the first wave that is a quarter wave 
and that is actually the calculated wave you have to calculate for the transmission line not the full wave and that's why everybody is talking about quarter wave that's the reason why so that means you have four quarter waves literally in a system of one wave and that needs to be applied uh, and for the calculation so when the tracking is started not connected to any wires and so on between the receiving side or the measuring side and the tracking output side you see a flat line if you have a transmission line and that is actually connected and it would re uh, return such a line that would be an ideal 100% impedance match that would be perfect however lines are not perfect and matching sometimes are not perfect either how imperfect they are can be measured here and that's actually measured in dB in decibel that means the power level here as well so let's see let's get started um, see how that looks like how we connect that okay so the end of the cable is closed you can either shunt the cable or you can keep it open I hear in that example I did shunt I did close the cable that means the so, so, so wave has to run twice go around here and comes back on the other side that means the frequency needs later on to be divided by 2 so what you can see here is well on a, on an oscilloscope you will see a complete different so we, you will see here on this side the faster value as you can see here 5.6 is this if I connect this one now over to the other side see half of the frequency so on here on so that's what you expect to see on a transmission line on a spectrum or scalar network analyzer you see a dip so this dip is actually here reflected here so that's the first one here of course it's it's the half of it it's not accurate so about 200 um, k long so that should be 2.6 megahertz so we take this value we take three of the strips this one I count this one and this one and then I will divide it by three and then it should give me um, the value of the transmission line or the 21 meter cable of coax cable 50 ohm I'm starting off now winding the coil in Tesla coil fashion that means wire next to each other very very close together however as a form factor you have to coil the coil wider than high so that is something which is not done in the standard Tesla coil community the maturity is, is a, um, coils have a form factor and the length or let's say height compare to this is still um, a multiply value and here in that case it's the opposite so this is much larger than the height of the coil so that is a standard setting how does it reflect on the frequency so the tuning is achieved at 3.6 megahertz and the energy is about it's received on the um, oscilloscope probe is 172 um, millivolt. Now we go to a wider spreading and have a look what impact that has. I have now increased um, irregularly the distance between the wires. I exaggerated, um, um, yeah, exaggerated it a little bit, but I want to show you only the difference. So let's see here with the same value what we get we get 4.46 megahertz for the same setting for the same energy into the system with wider um, spreading of the coil very important is it has to be very wide and no form 
everything based on the form is reducing the speed of propagation in the wave so we have here a very very strong one 